guys, welcome back to another Social Studies with Savannah video. Today I'm going to be doing a Who Was Hitler video as part of my World War II series. Uh, before I get into this video, I just want to say I'm going to be doing a new schedule. So, Social Studies with Savannah and me, I don't know about the other kids, but I'm going to be posting a video every Wednesday. So, if you want to um, see all my videos, then make sure that you get on and check in and check our channel every Wednesday. So I don't know what time, but Wednesday at some point I will be posting. Um, but that is my one announcement that I forgot to put in my last announcement video. So who was Hitler? Before I start, I just want to say. Uh, Hitler was a horrible human being. Like, he is not someone to celebrate. He is not someone who people should remember in a good way. He, maybe when he was a kid, he was better, but over the years, he just became a disgusting person. And after researching him and all the terrible stuff he did, I'm like, I kind of don't want to do this video. But I know it's part of World War II and Hitler was a really big part of that because he started it, but it's just, I'm not celebrating him in any way. So, Hitler was born in Austria in 1889, but he lived in Linz, the capital of Upper Austri Austria. His family was actually kind of a poor family. His father was a civil servant. Um, and since Hitler didn't want to be a poor person, he attempted to go to secondary school, but did not have an, he wasn't s smart enough, basically, and he dropped out. Um, his father died in 1903, and so that was only a little bit after he dropped out of secondary school. And so Adolf Hitler pursued being an artist, but he wasn't, he wasn't very successful. I mean, he did sell a couple paintings over the years, but he wasn't like a successful artist. So in 1908, following the def death of his mother, Hitler moved to Vienna, with, where Vienna is where he became interested in politics. Uh, at, uh, Hitler moved to Germany later, um, after Vienna, his, his uh, career there as an artist failed. So he moved to Germany, and in Germany he served in the Reserve Infantry Regiment in World War I. Uh, while he was serving, he won two decorations in war, uh, which he wore to the end of his life because he was really proud of them. So Hitler was injured twice in World War I, and during his recuperation, he learned that Germany was defeated, which was a blow to him because he believed that Germany was like this amazing place, and he believed that they should have won. So in 1918, Hitler joined the German, uh, the German Workers' Party, which aimed to unite Germany's working class. In 1920, Hitler left the army and took charge of the military's propaganda section. If you can hear cars in the background, there I'm at my church and there is a uh, semi-truck place over there and they're moving all their trucks around. So I'm sorry if you know you can't hear me at some point, I'll try to talk louder, but they are moving their trucks around and fixing trucks and stuff. But Hitler is the one who decided to turn the swastika into the propaganda symbol after the renaming of Germany's Workers' Party to the Nazi Party. So the swastika uh, is also called the Hooked Cross, but it was like an ancient symbol, I guess, is what the website said. And so they said it was a stroke of, stroke of genius that he decided to do that. So apparently Hitler was really good at propaganda. So Hitler took charge of the Nazi party in 1921 and focused on the spreading discontent of the Weimar Republic and the punishing term of the For Sales Treaty. In 1923, Hitler, Hitler went to a beer hall and proclaimed national revolution, 
which led to a gun battle with the police, and Hitler, being a backwards person, fled the gun battle almost immediately. So he was the one who decided to bring all those people into mortal danger, and then he, he left them to just fend for themselves. Uh, he was later arrested as well as many other rebel leaders. Even though the revolt failed, Hitler gained publicity and was seen as a hero in other German, German people's eyes. So Hitler was tried for treason and he was actually sentenced, sentenced to five years in prison, but he only spent nine months in relatively comfortable Landsberg Castle. So apparently he didn't serve his time. I'm not really sure why the website I went on didn't say but uh, he didn't get the jail time that he was deserved. Uh, while in Landsberg Castle, Hitler wrote a book called Mein Kampf, which in German means My Struggle, which would be published in 1925. His book outlined his anti-Semitic views. If you don't know what anti-Semitic means, it's anti-Jew, so I guess Semitic means Jews, and it means just anti-Jews, but I, that's a fancy word that I am going to be using. And and he also outlined his plans for to, to uh, raise Germany to power and take over the world, basically. He was like an evil villain in a movie. He wanted to take over the world. So Hitler wrote his second volume of Man, Mein Kampf, which, which with his rise in power, became Germany's best-selling book after the Bible. Uh, by 1940, Mein Kampf had sold over 6 million copies in Germany. So I don't know if you can imagine, but apparently people in Germany after World War I, they were very discouraged and depressed and just uh, down in the gutter, they just didn't, they weren't feeling, they felt defeated, which they were defeated, and so they looked at Hitler, and they saw a hero who would take Germany to a better place, where they would make Germany great again, and, uh, that, and so his book sold over six million copies, and he was very popular. So, Hitler was obsessed with race and ethnicity. He believed that he could make a pure race, which he called the Aryan race, which basically, he was a white supremacist. So he believed that white people were pure, and they were the white people with young white people with blonde hair and blue eyes. Those were the perfect people. Obviously, they're not because all people are created equal, but he was not a Christian, so he didn't believe that. He also believed that Germany could be united not through democracy, like we, like America, not through political uh, uh, safety, but through one supreme power, which he called the Führer. Uh, another one of Hitler's beliefs was that Germany should take over its eastern neighbors. So Austria, which where he was born, Sudetenland, Poland, and Russia were all places that he wanted to take over, which he explained in his book. There were people there called the Slavic people, and or Slavic, I think it's Slavic people, and they were considered in. in considered inferior to Hitler, so they weren't part of the Aryan race, so he thought, why not take over their countries, because they're inferior anyway. So, when Hitler left prison, uh, discontent for the year Weimar Republic and support of the Nazis had declined. So, while he was in prison and not actively trying to spread around hate for the Weimar Republic and trying to raise support for the Nazis, it declined substantially. So, in response to this, Hitler started the Hitler Youth Group and also the SS. So the Hitler Youth Group was meant to draw in young people who could help with the Nazis. And then the SS group was kind of like 
a branch of the military. So members of the SS were forced to, war, to wear all black and they also swore a personal oath of loyalty to Hitler himself, not to, to Germany or to Germany's government. They swore it to Hitler so that they were completely loyal to him. In 1929, the SS would form a group of 200 plus men who would dominate and terrorize Europe and Germany. So these were like the supreme elite and they were all loyal to Hitler. In 1932, Hitler ran for president of Germany and won 36.8% of the vote. In 1933, Hindenburg, who was the president who won the election, named Hitler Chancellor. Uh, even though the, last, the Nazis pertained, obtained less than 30%, I mean, not 30, 37% of the vote in 1932, Hitler was able to gain full control of Germany, mainly due to the inaction among those who opposed the Nazis. So basically, the people who were against Nazis, they weren't really doing much which allowed Hitler to take over and spread more propaganda and draw more people to the Nazi party. So after a terrible fire at Germany's parliament, which was first thought to be an act of terrorist, but then afterwards many people, well evidence suggested that the Nazis themselves burnt down to the parliament building. But after the fire, Hitler had an excuse to set up political oppression and violence against his opponents. So he blamed it on terrorists, but really his own party did it, but that gave him leeway to start persecuting other uh, nations and to force people into oppression. So on March 23rd, the Enabling Act was passed, giving full power to Hitler. So government was in chaos basically because they had the president but they also had Hitler and both were kind of at odds with each other because Hitler was technically underneath the president but uh, he wanted to gain full power and a lot of people in government thought he should so they gave full power to Hitler because the government was in conflict and they believed that Hitler could uh, help the government so that July, a law was passed, probably formed by Hitler, that said that the Nazi party was Germany's only party. So you know how we have uh, Republican and uh, Democratic? Well, they decided that Nazis were the only person that you could be, and all non-Nazi parties ceased to exist. So it would be like if a random person suddenly became in complete control of America and then decided that everyone had to be Republican or Democratic and that all other parties, third third class parties, all of them were no longer existed. So in 1934, Hitler withdrew Germany from the League of Nations, which was an alliance in Europe, and began to militarize Germany in order to conquer other lands. In June, the infamous Night of Long Lives occurred, which was where Hitler had Rome, the former Chancellor Kurt von Schleicher, and hundreds of people from his own party and from the SA murdered. So they were all considered problematic people, and uh, they, he had them all murdered because he didn't want them as part of the group anymore. And when Hitlerberg died at the age of 83 in August, Hitler became chancellor and president at the same time, giving him full control of the armed forces in Germany. So now he was basically a dictator because he controlled everything, including the entire military. Hitler passed numerous anti-Semitic laws, anti-Jewish laws, 
which stripped Jews of their citizenship and their civil and political rights. So basically, like I can remember from my Anne Frank video, they weren't allowed to own businesses, they weren't allowed to marry Germans, uh, they had curfews, uh, they weren't allowed to ride bikes at night. There was tons of things that just basically, some were kind of silly, like you weren't allowed to have uh, you could only have flowers that were the color of German. And, um, sorry for that. Um, one of the ladies here was trying to leave the church and there were sirens going off in the background. So I did pause the video so that, um, you wouldn't have to listen to that. But as I was saying, there was tons of anti-Semitic laws that Hitler passed and he had full power to pass them because he was in charge of everything. So basic, the Gestapo was a branch of the SS and they handled all persecution of Jews. So if you ever read a book about um, Anne Frank, Cory Ten Boom, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, any of them who got arrested, then you'll know that the Gest you'll hear the word Gestapo, and that's just like a secret, like undercover police, and they handled all persecution of Jews and people who were helping Jews. I want to note that Hitler not only persecuted Jews, he did persecute millions of Jews, and it was terrible, but he also persecuted uh, people of African descent, he persecuted poor, poor people, uh, gypsies, people like that. Anyone with mental or physical disabilities, he uh, thought that they they were a uh, kind of like a um, a glitch in the Aryan uh, race, so they had to be exterminated too. He thought people of different religions were had to be exterminated and. Uh, elderly people, people who couldn't take care of themselves, he also persecuted them. So he was terrible to the Jews, but I just wanted to note that he, basically anyone who wasn't a young white person, he persecuted. So over the next two years, Germany would reoccupy the left bank of Rhine, he would annex Austria and move against Czechoslovakia and and form alliances with both Italy and Japan and what I thought was odd was he had almost zero resistance from the France from France and Britain during this time in 1939 Hitler signed a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union which he would later break but and he invaded Poland, which finally, that was like the last straw that uh, France and uh, France, Britain and France declared war on Germany. Uh, in 1940, Germany invaded Norway, Denmark, Holland, and Belgium. Hitler also concocted a plan with his generals to take over France. So he took over basically all minor Europe countries surrounding him and then he wanted to break the alliance of Britain and France by making one of them sign a peace treaty with him. So Germany and yeah Germany invaded all the way to the English Channel which made both British and France uh, people evacuate which also forced France to sign an armistice with Germany. So Hitler hoped to force Britain to seek peace as well, but when his plans failed, he just continued with his invasion and uh, and also invaded the Soviet Union, breaking his treaty. After Pearl Harbor, which I will do a video on Pearl Harbor, but after Pearl Harbor in December, uh, the U.S. declared war on Japan, and according to J Japan's alliance with Germany, Germany declared war on the U.S. So, after Germany declared war on the U.S., 
Hitler's main focus was breaking the alliance of Britain and the, and the U.S. and the Soviet Union by getting one of them to sign a peace treaty with him. So he wanted to kind of like uh, separate the herd. Like, you know, when a lion is trying to catch a buffalo, he'll separate them. So that's what Hitler basically was trying to do with uh, the, the uh, allies. Uh, Germany held many cr concentration camps before World War II began, uh, which basically was just trying to make German people leave the, the country. But after World War II began, Germany's main goal was exterminating Jews. So I was at the beginning of this series going to do a Holocaust video, but after researching it, um, I decided I'm not going to because this is a kid-friendly kid channel and um, honestly it makes me sick to my stomach to think of the terrible things that happened and uh, it's just, you'll notice in my videos I kind of skip around the concentration camp because I was going to do a video on it but I'm not going to so um, I'm sorry that I didn't give you more information on it but I'm kind of glad I didn't because I just think it's a terrible thing that never should have happened and then following the defeats of El Amin and Strangid and the landing of U.S. troops in North Africa in 1942, the tables turned on Germany. So it took a the war took a turn for the better. So as conflict continues, Hitler's health also declined substantially, and he isolated himself to to it was just him and his personal physicians. So after that, the, al the Allies began liberating cities across Europe and successfully invaded Normandy in June. So usually an invasion would be bad, but in this uh, scenario, it's good because they were liberating Normandy from the Germans. So in December, Hitler once again tried to split the British and American forces through an offense on Ardennes, but that failed. So in January 1945, Hitler, he was in a bunker by himself. He made plans for a resistance, but he ditched it because Soviet Union forces were closing in on him and it, th there was no way that he was gonna be able to win. Um, during this whole time, he had been uh, dating a woman named Ava Braun, but he never got married to her. So on midnight on April 28th or 29th, whichever way you want to go, he married Ava Brown, Eva Brown, but then he shot himself on April 30th at the same time that Brown took poison. So basically they'd been married for a day then they both committed suicide and both of them were burned according to Hitler's instructions. So after this, with no leader, Germany surrendered with an unconditional surrender on all fronts. So uh, Nazis and Hitler had tried to make this a thousand year reach, wretch, but it actually lasted only 12 years. But even in this short time of 12 years, it caused unfathomable damage, destruction, and devastation, which really transformed Germany, Europe, and the world. Because if you think about it, before that and after the difference nothing would ever be the same millions of people were killed millions of people were uh, orphaned uh, turned out of their homes uh, the people's lives were changed substantially uh, al allies between alliances between countries were broken and just people were invaded, laws were changed, so many things happened that would really transform everything afterwards. But um, that is the end of my video. Again, I think World War II, after studying so much more, was just a terrible, terrible thing. And it never should have happened. People should have never let it happen. 
I think this is one of the things where France and Britain, I mean, I'm not blaming them, but, and America too, because America didn't join the war until late, that they should have tried to snip it at the bud, basically. And they just, it's just a terrible thing that happened. But on that note, this is the end of my video. Um, again, I will be posting every Wednesday. Uh, I, I just hope you, I mean, I hope you don't enjoy learning about Hitler because he's a terrible person, but that you're properly informed about him. And I just want to say uh, like and subscribe, turn on your notifications, and never stop learning.